Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield, from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. at me they mock me with parted lips they wag their heads he replied on the Lord let him deliver him let him rescue him if he loves him my God my God why have you abandoned me indeed many dogs surround me a pack of evil doors closes in upon me They have pierced my hand and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Rever him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, Coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. For the gospel, we're going to read the Passion. Everybody should have a missalette, because you have a role. We each have a part. And your, your voice is the voice of the crowd. It will begin on page 14. Pray. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Lord be with you and with, with your spirit. spirit the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark the Passover and the feast of the unleavened bread were to take place in two two days time so the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death they said When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Of perfume oil. It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do them good. You can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen. I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare this Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the prepare preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he, as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of God, Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. And they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you. I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. 
Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I've been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping? You're taking your rest. It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber, with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands. In three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, 
What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophecy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were the Nazarian Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court, then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, You are one of them, for you too are Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release you to the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated, place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. 
Let the Christ and the King of Israel come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, the master which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he's calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked the sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please kneel. Please stand. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from the distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James, and of Joseph, and, of, and Salome. Those women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Ar Ar Arimathea, <clears throat> a distinguished member of the council, who was, with him, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. This year, we read the Passion according to St. Mark. This is, we often call this Palm Sunday, but liturgically, it's called Passion Sunday. Passion comes, the word passion comes from the same root as the word passive, as opposed to active and action. Passion, the passion of the Lord is what is it that he's willing to undergo? What is he willing to accept? What is he willing to receive? The passion of the Lord is what he allows to happen to him. And it's the way we open Holy Week. It's like a preview because we read the full sweep of his passion and then we'll break it down on Thursday and Friday and Saturday and enter it to more deeply and more detail. Part of it is done in the reading of the Passion is put together so that you could say terrible things. That's why we, we put the Passion together precisely so you, I say all the Jesus stuff that's all very, very nice and holy, and you said all the terrible things. Mark in his gospel has a detail that isn't in the other passions things. It's about a young man who's following Jesus 
with the disciples in the garden. And the conflict arises. They're arresting Jesus and swords come out and clubs come out and one fella comes and they're going to grab him to arrest him, a young man, and they grab hold of him and he runs away and they, he's just in a linen robe and they pull it away and he runs away naked. And most scripture scholars says that's Mark. John Mark. That the arrest of Jesus stripped him stripped him. And like Adam and Eve after the first sin, noticed his nakedness. The passion helps us see our pettiness. The first things you said. It says, don't arrest him at the feast, that'll cause a problem. Not like he's a good man, but just so don't arrest him at the feast. And they pour the alabaster, the perfume nard on him, and it's like, oh, that was a waste. You could have done something better. And you slowly build until you say, and then you, with Peter, you are the ones that make Peter uncomfortable. Because you said, you're a Nazarene too. You're a Galilean. You were with him, weren't you? No, no, I have no idea who that is. No, I saw you with him. No, 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 I mean, you're the ones who make it hard for people to profess their faith. We put you in that place to strip away ways we might think, that we don't make Christ go through things, because we do. We make Christ go through things, and his passion is that he's willing to. He's willing to go through and receive what we have to offer him. And in this week, we're supposed to dive in, not just to see, be stripped away and say, you know, I make Christ go through some stuff, but also reveal, strip away, and find out why would he be willing to put up with this? Why would he be willing to die, and not just die, but go into the darkness of death, which runs right next to it, despair. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? That's our darkness and our discouragement. Now why would he be willing to accept this? There's a wonderful song by a, a Christian um, artist, musician called Michael Card. It's called Why. It says, why did he have to be betrayed by a friend? And why did he have to be betrayed by a kiss? to show us that that's not what a kiss is for. He had to be betrayed by a friend because a stranger has nothing to gain. And only a friend can ever make us feel so much pain. It had to be a friend. And why did it have to be a crown of thorns that they put upon his head? It should have been a royal one filled with jewels and gold instead. It had to be a crown of thorns because in this world that we live, for those who seek to love, a thorn is all it has to give. And why did he have to be, did he have to die upon a cross? Why did they have to nail him there? And nail, nail his feet and hands? His love would have kept him there. It had to be on a cross. Because on a cross, a thief was made to pay. And Jesus came into this world to steal our hearts away. We begin this holy week stripping bare all our defenses and, 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 and ways of trying to justify ourselves so that in turn we can look and consider why? Why does he love us so? How could this be? We started today. This love is so deep. We're going to have to take our time to enter into it through Thursday and Friday and Saturday as well.
I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and visible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men, for our salvation came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. It's one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrected dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As Jesus enters victoriously into Jerusalem to do his Father's will, we turn to the Father united with our crucified Savior. Pope Francis and all bishops, priests, and deacons who devotedly lead us in prayer during this holiest time of the year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that our remembrance of the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ will straighten the church in holiness and care for her new growth. We pray for those preparing for full entry into the church at the Easter Vigil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that all Christians may be able to celebrate Holy Week without fear or repress repression. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who suffer, those who are sick, those who mourn the death of a loved one, and those who face unexpected disasters. We pray that they may find consolation this week by joining their sufferings with Christ on the cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we may grow in our fidelity to the covenant in which we were baptized. We pray for those being baptized into the covenant at the Easter Vigil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of this Mass, consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, spiritual health and blessing of Dimitro Onoskovsky, spiritual health and well-being of the Miragilia family, deliverance for Anani Simeon, thanksgiving and birthday wishes for Mrs. Patricia Dola Okahide, thanksgiving and blessing for Yinka Akande, thanksgiving and blessing for Mrs. Yowande Turilio, thanksgiving and blessings for Adiyeba Akande, Juan Long Mac, Virtual Wolofkowska, Maria Anaskowski, and Marcelo Rosario. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those sick members of our family and community who are unable to be with us today. Romero, Edwin Marte, Maria Amelia Rios, Rosemary Dow, John Dialosa, Ida Rivera, Fernando Uirio, Jose Alvedaro, Benito Fernandez, Josuel Santos, Argentina Fernandez, Felix Perez Jr., Isabel Nicosia. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the deceased members of our community, especially those who have died recently. Santa Matos. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, by the Holy Cross of Christ, your Son has redeemed the world. Help us to take up his cross and be united with Jesus in his passion. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our offertory song is Para Mai Como Tu, song, song, song number 638. 638. <laughs> Great is your love, everlasting and true. Señor, danos tu amor, para amar con 
como tú to feed the hungry Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that Though we do not merit to be a, it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord God of hosts. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you, you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance 
peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and entire people you gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Throw him with men in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So offer each other a sign of peace. Let us turn to one another and offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord. communion song is Behold the Lamb, song number 535, 535. Those who work in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. 
we who live, we who die, are grateful for His gift, thankful for His love. Behold, behold the Lamb of God, all who eat, all who drink shall live.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Monday will be Reconciliation Monday. The church will be open for confessions from 2 to 4 p.m. and 6 to 8 p.m. We will not have the school mass on Wednesday at 10 a.m. Please make sure to review our Holy Week schedule. Next week, second diocesan collection is to support senior priests. We will not have CCD classes this week nor next week. Classes resume on April 7th. Our youth group will be hosting an Easter egg hunt fundraiser next Sunday. Tickets are $10 and include face painting, egg hunt, and picture with Easter Bunny. For additional information, please review the flyer in this week's bulletin. We need your support with our school, Salve Virginia Catholic Academy. Please consider registering your children pre-K to 8th grade in our Catholic Academy. We do offer a discount for registered members of the parish, and they do have scholarships available, but you need to go into the school and ask. Our school is in jeopardy of being closed if we don't get the students and funds need to keep it open. If you wish to make a monetary donation, you can bring it to the parish office or the school. No donation is too small. Every little bit helps. We ask that everyone please add our school children and staff to your daily prayers. Thank you. The, the Salvo Regina Academy, um, the last handful of years, we've had to get subsidy from the diocese, $200,000, $300,000, even $400,000 in the course of a year. Um, our, we have 192 students, and there's been a lot of improvements in the academic standing. It's now we, we do better in, in terms of reading and math scores than any of the public schools in the area. Um, and we've raised the, the academic standards. It's a wonderful place in, in that there's no, it's got a real nice culture and, and the sense of the place is, has, has, it's not, there's no, nothing chaotic about it. Sometimes you get into schools. But we need to have more students. We can raise the money uh, t or, or to cover a lot of it, but we need more students. That's just how it is. Um, so please think about it. There's materials in the office if you want to hand it out to neighbors you know who have children, and 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 to um, and if there you have in your family uh, grade school age kids. It's a. Um, it's not about that. We might have to subsidize it to some extent, but it's not about the money. It is that we have a mission to communicate our Catholic values and Catholic education has been one of the key ways of doing that and I think the school has that weight there we, we keep a, a pretty strong presence the kids come to to mass every week um, also adoration and the like it's it has a strong Catholic culture so asking you to think and help to spread the word we've got a window to figure it out in the course of this spring so please do so we begin Holy Week with Palm Sunday. But Holy Week is one thing. This isn't just Palm Sunday. This is the first act. At the end of this Mass, we don't sing a song. It's silent as we go out because it's just a break before we take the next act, which is Thursday. And the third act into Friday. Each of those celebrations ends in a way that leaves an opening for the next one which means you got to come back because it ain't over the lord be with you bow your heads and pray for god's blessing look we pray O lord on this your family for whom our lord jesus christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.